Hey yo guys, like pleasure, welcome back to another video. So today we're gonna to be covering a video on Aurora and how to use it as a local host. Since they did shut down Aurora, they did decide to open it up to open source so anyone can modify it and do whatever they want with it. But today I'm gonna to show you how you can use it yourself. Now before we do get into this video, I do want to say if you are new to the channel, make sure you do leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel since it shows me that you're liking this content. And quite for normal guys, let's get straight into it. So one of the first steps you are going to do is go ahead and go into the description and you want to follow the link to GitHub. Now, essentially this is just where they've hosted their backend and this is essentially all the server is. So you want to go ahead and click code, click download zip, put it to your desktop, click save. Down here it may come up saying about backend master, you want to click here. If it does say blocked, go to downloads and then keep dangerous file and say keep anyway. From there it's going to be on here and you're going to need to use a program like WinRAR or 7-zip to extract it. And then you just want to drag this to your desktop. I have already so it is right here. I'm going to go ahead and delete this and close out my browser. Now actually before we do close our browser there are a few steps down here for the installation. So we're going to keep these BIOS for a minute. Open up backend master and this is what we're going to be brought. Now if you did ever use any of my lobby bots you do know this will look a bit similar. Now all you want to do is go ahead here type in CMD. Go ahead and type in npm install and it's going to go ahead and start installing stuff. I do already have my node modules so for me it's going to be pretty quick and I'm going to have nothing here. However once you have done that you should see a new folder called node modules. Now I do want to say if this doesn't work for anyone and you're getting issues saying about node not existing. You want to go ahead and go down to this website here called node. You want to go ahead and click node.js. Download the recent version and go ahead and install it that way and then retry this again. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. So once you have got everything sorted out, the first thing you're going to see is something called config.json.template. Go ahead and rename this and remove the .template at the end of here. And then right click this, click open with and then whatever. I'm just going to open it with notepad real quick. So as you can see we have a few things in here. Now you may have some lines in here, just make sure all that is in the file is this. Now you can leave this all on the default, port 80, 443 and this here. You don't really need to change anything, just make sure you do remove the rename at the start. Now the next step we are going to do is go ahead and open up GitHub again and download something called MongoDB. So as we can see the next step here, or it is one of the first ones, it says install MongoDB. So you want to click here, it's going to bring you to this page. Now you want to make sure it's on on-premises, like this, on the community server, and then just click download. Now you want to set the download location and let this install. Now once this has finished installing, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. It's going to run a setup file. It will take a few minutes, so just let it go through everything. And once it is done, it's going to open up MongoDB. So I'm going to go ahead and open it here. And this should be roughly what you will see. Now once everything has opened up, it's going to see something called new connection. Now we can really quickly go here. And if we go back into our config.json, what you will notice is there was a file in there named MongoDB in a 127. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that, paste it in here click connect and it's going to go ahead and connect us to our database now you shouldn't have anything inside of here now there's something called test there will be nothing in here for you because what you do need to do now is run it and this will all do itself so you want to go ahead and close out of this click start.bat and what you will notice is going to say all of this stuff here if you see this you've done everything correctly essentially it's connected to the database everything's running now one of the next things you want to do is you want to go to your local host and make a new account on Aurora so what I'm going to go ahead and do is open up Google Chrome and you want to type in 127.0.0.1 that is all you need to type in now as you can see we do have the home page you want to click login sign up and now you just want to create an account so I'm going to really quickly create an account and I'll be back if you once I have so once everything has been typed in such as this you want to go ahead and click sign up and now if you go back to your console as you can see it says account create account aquaplays underscore test with the ID now if you go back to your MongoDB click refresh you're gonna have a lot more things here now for example if you go to users you should have a few users in here. This is the one I did just create, the ID, Aquaplays underscore test, test at gmail.com. So as you can see, everything here has worked correctly. From here, we want to move on to the next step, which is launching the game with the private server. So what you can go ahead and do as well, I want to quickly mention, is if you go to login, you can go ahead here and type in your credentials. And as you can see, we will be logged in here fine. So you can see the account ID, the username, and here you can change all of your stuff just like you could on back on the normal Aurora private server. So now, like I said, let's move on to the next step on how we can load this in. Now there's going to be a link in the description which is going to take you to something named Aurora Launcher underscore localhost. Now I made a few changes to the launcher, uh, nothing in here is bad or anything like that, it's the same as the normal Aurora Launcher. So if we go ahead and double click this, it's going to open up here, you want to click allow access and now all you want to do here is type in the credentials that you did just make. I'm going to use the other account I made since it's already typed in, but once you have typed in everything will work fine and it will save. Now one more thing I do want to quickly mention, if you go to settings you're going to see install location so you can see D, Fortnite, Fortnite. Make sure it is set to your one, click save, close out of that, 
and all you've really got to do is click launch then you want to click save close out of that and now you want to do the last step so once again i did mention we're going to want to install something called fiddler so i'm going to go ahead and leave a link to fiddler once you have done that you want to open up fiddler it will take a second and there's a few more things you are want to do once you're in here so the first thing i want to say you want to go to tools options go to https and make sure you have decrypt https traffic on go ahead and click ok and that should be it now one more thing you do want to do actually is go to fiddler script and make sure you have this typed in i'll go ahead and also leave a link to the script in the description all this will do is connect us to our local host server so once you have put it in you want to click save script for example it would look like this and now you want to keep this open as you launch your game so you want to click launch our game will launch and we'll be connected to the server so i'm going to go ahead and let this load real quick now one quick mention if you did type in your email and the password you made for the account in the launcher it will automatically log you in so you don't have to worry about typing in otherwise it will come up here saying enter the email and password that you made for the account so you want to go ahead and wait a little bit longer and we should be loaded in fine as you can see the game has loaded so as you can see everything has worked correctly if we go ahead and go to locker we do have every item in the game and this should work now for the most recent version of the game. You can go back to other versions and use slightly different scripts to make this work and different SSL bypasses. However, this is the easiest way to use it on the most recent version. So we can equip the skin, we can pick any back bling we want, go ahead and use emotes. So it is a really cool thing to use, you know, we can use these emotes which makes emotes look really goddamn strange. Now when it does come to friends and invite on other people, since you are hosting it on your local host, no one else will be able to connect you. Now you can still add people or other accounts that have been made, I've tried this before, obviously not much you can really do unless you have two versions of the game open, so it is pretty pointless when it comes to that. However, that is about it for the tutorial, it is very simple way of saying, uh, if you guys do need any help, I recommend you joining my discord server and asking me for help, or in the comment section even one works. And apart from that one guys, I do want to say thank you to Slush and Sayubi for letting me post this public, and I appreciate them for everything they have done to us project apart from that one guys i'll see you in the next video peace out